Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault and once again it is Sunday and time for the Texas Gun Vault poll question of the week. A weekly segment that I put out where I poll you as my viewers and subscribers about something that deals with firearms, the firearms community, firearms culture that I kind of want to know what your thoughts and opinions are. So this is a segment that you guys lead more than I do. This week's topic is on dry firing for practice. So let's dive right into the question and let's see what you guys have to say about it. This week's question deals with using dry firing for training purposes. Since the cost of ammo is so high right now, I know a lot of shooters are turning to alternative forms of practice and training. One of these techniques is dry fire practice. Do you use dry fire practice and do you think it is a beneficial training tool? So I wanted to go this week with something a little bit different than I have in weeks past. I know I've been talking a lot about gun control, I've been talking about specific ways of carrying guns. I really don't talk about training on my channel very much because you guys know I'm more into the mechanics and the history of guns. So to actually talk about training and what your guys' philosophy is was going in a little bit different direction and I'm glad that you guys had such strong opinions and voted so much in this poll. So let's dive right into the results. With 759 votes, we have yes, running drills helps with trigger control and accuracy, 60%. Yes, but it is more just to get used to the feel of the trigger, 22%. No, dry firing can damage some guns and is generally unsafe, 6%. No, the difference between dry firing and shooting are too many, 10%, and something else explained in the comments below, 3%. All right, so this is actually going to be one of the weeks where I find myself in the extreme minority. I disagree with a lot of you guys on the use of dry firing, but that's perfectly okay. But let's go through each one of these and I'll give my opinions and then we'll get to your comments. Yes, running drills helps with trigger control and accuracy. Well, the overwhelming 60%. I know there's a lot of products out there that claim to help with trigger control and accuracy where you can use lasers and little things that you can put in the chamber. There's also a lot of trainers out there that talk about drills. There are a few drills that I do find legitimate. For example, the penny drill or the dime drill. It's the thing where you put a coin on the front sight of your pistol, try to dry fire the gun without the coin falling off. This means that you're not anticipating the shot, you're pulling the trigger back evenly, and of course that is going to help with your end result accuracy. But of course when you're doing drills, it is very different than the actual firing of the gun. When you fire the gun, you've got the mechanics of the gun working against you, you've got the sound and the concussion, and a lot of times your stress level or your anxiety can be up just a little bit more because obviously when you're using live ammunition, you have to be ultra safe. Now, of course, when you're doing dry firing exercises, you must always follow the rules of gun safety. However, when you know that you're using live ammunition, that awareness, of course, is up a little bit more. And I think that also affects how you control the gun and your accuracy with the gun as well. I think it just plays into a little bit. Now, for a very experienced shooter, like I know most of you guys are, that would probably be negligent. But for new gun owners, I think it is a bigger factor than what most people give it credit for. For. Now, as a music teacher and teaching instruments, there are things that we do that, that I guess would be akin to dry firing in a way that we would do basic motions of how to manipulate the instrument, how to control the instrument, how to hold the instrument, things that we can do to our bodies that in isolation are good to know and to study, but when you actually apply them in practice, sometimes there's not a direct correlation that just because somebody can master a particular micromuscular exercise doesn't mean that it applies to the actual practice or the use of that exercise in, in this case, musical instruments or firing a gun. That's just from my personal 
perspective. Now, for some of you guys, especially the more advanced shooters and maybe those that do competitive shooting, this might be a very worthwhile venture because you guys have so many rounds down range. You guys know your guns so well that when you do dry fire, your body already knows the concussion. It knows the recoil impulse of that gun. It knows your tendencies and you can work on those. But I find that the dry firing exercises, especially for novice and intermediate shooters, I personally do not think are as beneficial as actually going to the range and shooting. And I find personally that shooting with things like 22 are much more advantageous than actually dry firing. So you actually have a maybe a very light ammunition, as I said, like a, like a 22, 25 ACP, something that's not going to have a lot of recoil, that you can manage the gun very well, but you're still using live ammunition and having to deal with the action of the gun. Next we have yes, but it is more just to get used to the feel and the trigger. Now, this is not the one that I personally would have voted for. This is probably the second one I would have voted for. I do dry fire, but I don't do it as practice to help me with accuracy. I do it so I can learn the gun. Every trigger is a little bit different. Every gun is a little bit different. The length of the grip, the pull weight, the wall, the break, the take up, all those things are really important. So I find that dry firing a gun is important, especially if you know you're gonna be going to the range, you're gonna be doing a class with that particular gun. It is important to know how that gun operates, how it feels, what to expect. If you know what a trigger feels like, I think your accuracy is going to go up tremendously, more than actually doing the drills, just knowing how heavy is the trigger or light the trigger or what it is, how it is going to react. Now, this is the one that if I do dry fire, if it's not for testing function, it would be for this. I just wanna learn what the trigger feels like. And 22% of you guys agree with that sentiment. Next we have no, dry firing can damage some guns and is generally unsafe. Now, I put this one in here because I know there's a lot of people that like to shoot 22, shoot rim fire, or may have guns that generally you should not dry fire. I know there's some issues with certain guns like CZs. I know some particular models with SIG. I don't remember the models off the top of my head. They do not recommend dry firing. Some people say that it's because the heat treatment on the firing pins, or if in the case of rim fire, if the gun is not designed properly to account for dry firing, if you dry fire the gun, you're actually having the firing pin hit the side of the wall or the side of the chamber versus going in the center where the round actually would be. Now, I'm not aware of any snap caps for 22, but I do say though, if you are going to dry fire in a gun and you are worried about damaging the gun, always go with snap caps. I definitely think that they are a worthwhile investment. One of the great training tools with snap caps is have somebody load your magazines. Let's just say you have a Glock 19, holds 15 rounds. Have somebody put in eight rounds, or don't tell you how many rounds they put in, eight live rounds, then put in the dummy round, then put in the rest of the magazine. So you don't know when that gun is going to go click and not bang, and to see your reaction and to see if you're gonna pull the shot or anticipate the shot. I've always found that to be a much more worthy exercise than simply dry firing. But I also know there's a lot of safety sallies out there that think dry firing under any conditions breaks the rules of gun safety. I can respect that. I do disagree with that because I believe that if you are by yourself and you have checked that gun, you know that gun is safe, it is safe to dry fire. It is safe to point, let's say, at the television if you're watching The Walking Dead and you know, imagine you're shooting the zombie or something because you have personally inspected that gun. No one else has handled it. It has been in your possession the entire time. I find that that is not breaking a rule of gun safety. Now, the rule of gun safety you still should follow, of course, don't point the gun at anything. You really don't want to kill or destroy, mainly people, animals, that kind of thing. You still want to follow that. But that level of dry fire practice, I think, is okay and does not break the rules of gun safety, as I said, because you have personally safety checked that firearm. And next we have, no, the differences between dry firing and shooting are too many, 10%. This is actually the one I would have voted for if I was participating in this poll. I personally find that the act of shooting 
is very different than simply dry firing. I'm a guy that likes to get his guns out, out of the safe and kind of, I jokingly say, fondle them because I love guns. I love looking at the mechanics of the guns. I like taking them apart. I like knowing their history. That's what really gets me excited about guns and gun collecting. Of course, I enjoy shooting. But I have tried some dry firing practice, but I've watched videos with very respected trainers going over dry firing drills. I've tried those myself. And as I said, some of them I can see validity in. Others, I do not find that there is an overlap with what you do in the dry firing practice and at the range. The differences are simply too big. I personally only dry fire to check function, but not to work on accuracy. And finally, we have something else explained in the comment section below 3%. So obviously there's some people that think it's not good, it's not bad, maybe they're, they're just indifferent, they don't care. But let's get right to your comments and see what you guys have to say. So as always, we will go to the top five rated comments of the week. And this week we have, with the number one rated comment, Mr. FNH who says, the Dry Fire Mag and Mantis Blackbeard with Green Laser have been instrumental in my dry firing sessions. Okay, so this is one of the things where you're buying some gizmo or gadget to use in your gun. I definitely think there is something to it, but I don't think it plays as big a part as actually going to the range and firing the gun itself. But if it works for him, I have no problem. I am perfectly fine and I'm so happy that people are just getting the guns out. They're practicing with them, they're learning the guns, and they are trying to be better marksmen. So even if you disagree with me or you have a different opinion on this than I do, it is perfectly okay as long as we are together trying to become better marksmen as I mentioned and love our guns, we're all on the same page. Next we have Joe Morgan, one of my biggest fans always comments on all of my videos. He says, dry drills help familiarize with you with a new gun and I use them daily to stay sharp between the range visits. All right, so another comment. He said he likes the dry firing exercises. Now here, personally, I think he probably voted for the number one saying it works on accuracy, but for me, he's saying to keep yourself familiarized with the gun. That's kind of what the option two was, just to know the trigger, because that is the most important part when it comes to familiarizing yourself with a firearm. But he likes it, it works for him, and good on him. Then we have Gort, who says, fortunately, I had enough ammo on hand that I was able to continue to practice throughout the drought. I personally don't find dry fire drills realistic enough to be worthwhile. And here's somebody that may have agreed with me. I just don't see the advantage of them. I don't want to spend as much time dry firing or creating some type of scenario in my head when I can actually go to the range. I find that to be much more beneficial because you have all of the factors and all of the variables at play. The recoil of the gun, the concussion of the sound, using live ammunition. I think all those factors play an important part because it's the entire aspect of the shooting experience that is important. So if you're ever in a stressful situation, you haven't just dry fired and are not ready or used to the concussion or the sound or all of the other stressful things that are going on in that moment. If you've gone to the range and actually shot, I think it's a lot more realistic and helps your accuracy in the long run. Then we have Matt Moore. I practice dry firing pistols nearly every day. Repetitive training of perfect draw, presentation, grip, trigger control, reloading, etc. is necessary to become more proficient. All right, so it sounds like Matt would be on the side of number one. But it sounds like the things that he actually practices are outside of accuracy. I completely agree with him when it comes to practicing holstering and unholstering. That is something that a lot of people don't take into consideration. Because if you ever have to use your firearm in self-defense, seconds could be the difference between life or death. And if you're fumbling to get your shirt up, or if you're a lady and you have your gun in a purse and you never practice actually quickly drawing from that purse, that could mean the difference between life or death. And so what he says here I think is really important, but I think this type of practice and the presentation of the gun is very different than actually practicing for accuracy's sake. But it's interesting that he kind of takes a more holistic approach on dry firing in that he does dry fire but also practices the other steps, both reloading, presenting the gun, brandishing the gun, all those things are really important. So 
I like that approach a little bit more than simply just the dry firing. And finally we have Gary Drum who says, I just bite the bullet and live fire train. Though I limit the number of rounds I bring to the range, I also dry fire when practicing motions and muscle memory drills. Like holster draw and acquiring my sight picture. Dry fire is a necessary component, but accuracy and recoil management can really only be done with live fire rounds in my humble opinion. And personally, I find this to be spot on. This is exactly how I feel. As I said, I have no problem with dry fire practice, but I don't think it is the end all and be all. I think that if you go to the range and only shoot 20, 25 rounds in one session once a week, I think you actually get more done than dry firing hundreds of times at your home because of all the other factors, all the other things that play into being proficient and accurate with your firearm. I don't think you need to dry fire, as I said, hundreds of times where 25 rounds a week could be just enough for you to keep that muscle memory and keep the training and the accuracy and everything else that goes into being proficient up to date. So there you go. That is the Texas Gun Vault poll question of the week. A little bit different one. And as I said, I found myself in the minority. So who knows? Maybe you guys hate me a little bit more now because I think differently than you, but that's okay, right? We're all friends here because we all want to be better marksmen. We all love firearms and we all love the second amendment. All right. So if you want to participate in next week's poll, please go to the community tab on my YouTube channel. Check it out there. It should go live at the same time that I publish this video. Who knows? It could be on another training aspect. It could be on a firearm, it could be on something on gun control or something in the news. I kind of figured out the day of before I publish it. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for participating in these polls. As always, I love interacting with you. And by the way, in case you wonder, I never vote in these polls and I never respond to the comments like I do on the other videos because I want them to be completely you guys. I don't want to have any influence on affecting the polls outcome or the top rated comments of the week. All right, guys, so let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below, and thank you for educating me on this aspect of firearms training and what you guys think about it. So as always, thanks for watching.